Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again, and welcome to The Roads with Bo. Today is May 12th, 2024, and this is episode 38 of The Roads Not Taken, which is a weekly series where we go through the previous week's events and talk about news that was unreported, underreported, didn't get the coverage I thought it deserved, or I just found it interesting. Um, so, on top of that, happy Mother's Day. And we will start off with two items. One is a PSA. And uh, basically, over the last week, a whole lot of people probably could have benefited from a NOAA radio. N-O-A-A radio. Um, if you live in an area with inclement weather, probably worth having one. Uh, the other thing is that uh, somebody somebody said that they were going to send me something. And... Uh, by the photo, I couldn't actually tell how big it was going to be, but uh, yeah, so that's me as a as a puppet. I have no idea what I'm going to use this for yet, but expect for this to make an appearance a few times. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Okay, so moving on to foreign policy. The U.S. announced a new $400 million package for Ukraine. Um, there is some reporting that says Ukraine might have used a U.S.-made system to hit a target inside Russia. It looks like Russia launched a surprise offensive near Kharkiv. Um, let's see. Moody's has left Israel's credit outlook unchanged, so it is still negative. Um, a U.S. soldier stationed in Korea, uh, has been arrest arrested in Russia after traveling there to reportedly meet his girlfriend. His wife said he was having an affair and indicated that he was not engaged in espionage. Um, now, there are obviously a lot of developments when it comes to what is going on with Israel. Uh, we're going to have to take those as they come because by the time this goes out, it could all change. So that's why there's not a lot on that. But uh, it does appear that leaflets have been dropped suggesting that, suggesting that there may still be a move into a uh, very populated portion uh, of uh, Rafa. Okay, so U.S. news. There are suggestions that Democratic advisors are considering holding part of the convention online to cut down on the risk of it being disrupted by protests. Uh, Barron Trump was slated to be a delegate at the RNC, where he would have you know, voted for his dad, but a statement from his mother's office indicated that he had declined that opportunity. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about what happened there. Uh, not something I'm going to uh, delve into. Okay, there are still demonstrations. They're continuing throughout uh, commencement ceremonies at universities across the country. Steve Bannon had his appeal rejected, and it appears that Rudy might be taking over his show, or at least going to work for him for some period, something like that, because Rudy was reportedly suspended and had his show canceled over at WABC. Um, let's see. Governor Nome is... Uh, Facing a petition to resign, it's gathered more than 20,000 signatures. Uh, Utah activists flooded a tip line for uh, one of those bathroom bills. The state auditor is furious. <laughs> um, basically said that he uh, that they didn't come in to be a, uh, a bathroom monitor. Uh, Senator Menendez is slated to go to trial on Monday. Um, this is the uh, th this is the one with the gold bars. That one. 
uh, Virginia Commonwealth University graduates walked out during uh, Governor Yunkin's speech. In cultural news, TikTok has filed their suit in court, as expected. Uh, most analysts are saying that they have an incredibly strong case, which, I mean, they probably do. Uh, Miss USA and Miss Teen USA have both resigned their positions. Um, there's a lot of speculation about that as well. A Virginia school board voted to restore Confederate names to two schools. That They were taken off, and a few years later, they have now decided to put them back on. Um, a descendant of Stonewall Jackson, who one of the schools is named after, said, I respect their right to do what is morally wrong. And... Uh, is definitely not in favor of having the school renamed after their ancestor. Uh, in something that just struck me as a little odd, USA Today ran a headline. Trump and Republicans are lying to you about non-citizens voting. That is an incredibly direct headline, um, particularly from the USA Today. So... Okay, in science news, a study is suggesting that the biggest driver of new infectious diseases is biodiversity loss, followed by climate change, and then followed by the introduction of non-native species. In related news, the World Health Organization missed a deadline for a pandemic treaty, but talks will reportedly uh, continue to go on. In oddities, a woman was found living inside a Michigan grocery store's rooftop sign. That might be a sign in and of itself that something really needs to be done about housing. Um, okay. Okay, so this is something I, I think it's just worth mentioning. Uh, I am not somebody who tries to make mental health diagnosis. Um, it, it's not my field. But Trump's behavior in speech is becoming more and more and more erratic. I actually have a video coming out about that really weird video he put on social media about RFK Jr. Um, uh, I'm not even sure I'm going to release it now because Trump went on a, a rant about Hannibal Lecter. It, it's just getting more and more bizarre. Um, and I think it's probably something that may continue to get more erratic. Um, okay, moving on to the question and answer section. Why can't they just get rid of the veto at the Security Council? Because the UN isn't, the veto is necessary for the UN to function as it is supposed to. Keep in mind, what people think it does and what it's supposed to do aren't the same thing. Um, the other reason is general assembly votes aren't actually binding. So there, there wouldn't be a... That it would remove the ability to even borrow dentures. You know, when I say the UN doesn't have teeth, nothing would be binding. And if you made General Assembly votes binding, you could easily create a situation where, um, I don't know, let's say 120 countries decide that the United States should invade Canada. If you actually try to turn it into a world government, you run into really big issues real quick. Um, it, it's again, it's it's not a world government. It's an international body, and you know, I was kind of venting about this because a, a lot of people do view it as 
something that has a lot of power. One of the longest running analogies on this channel is that foreign policy, well, it's an international poker game and everybody's cheating. The casino that's hosting the tournament probably isn't on the up and up either. Just bear that in mind. Um, you say you don't script. Do you think your videos might be better <laughs> if you did? <laughs> Not saying they're bad. Just wondering if extra organization would make them better. No, I sound incredibly robotic. Um, it, it doesn't... It does not work for me. <laughs> when history looks back at Biden's foreign policy, how do you think he will be judged? That entirely depends on whether or not what he's doing right now works. If he can get them on the path to a, to a Palestinian state, to a two-state solution, his foreign policy will go down as, as one of the best in history. If he can't, it, it, the nickname will stick. Um, that's, again, foreign policy isn't fair. It's not fair for politicians either. Um, overall, when you look at all of the different foreign policy things that he's had to deal with, that his administration has had to deal with. Overall, it, it's been really good. This is an incredibly big deal that will overshadow everything else. So if this doesn't turn out well, it, it's going to, when history looks back at it, this is going to be the one that matters. So it depends on how this works out. Note, you might want to explain the events from the UN resolution creating Israel to them being admitted. You have a lot of questions about this. Yeah, okay, so this came up a lot when I said that uh, the UN can't just create a state. Okay. I wish I had known this was going to be here. Uh, <laughs> so, resolution 181. It was passed by the General Assembly, I think, in 1947. It's worth noting, yeah, it's 1947. Um, it's worth noting that a whole lot of people also view that as something that provides a legal basis for Palestinian statehood as well. A basis. But that didn't actually create Israel the state. That's, that's not what happened. So the, the resolution was put into place, and then a, a war happened. Two, really. Um, if you want to be technical, there was the one that ended on May 14th, 1948. And that is when Israel declared independence. That it immediately turned into another war um, that ran until early 1949. And then in May of 49, they were admitted to the UN. Um, they were admitted to the UN once they had a government, they had taken territory, so they had. They had borders, they had a government, and had the means to defend it. They had a security arrangement. Um, that The resolution did not admit them to the UN, and I think that's where a lot of the confusion happens. The thing is, this period is incredibly important. Um, you know, recently, um, recently Hillary Clinton talked about how a lot of people don't know the history. And I'm going to be honest, that may be something I'm not going to be able to bite my tongue about. Um, 
because, you know, I, I said I was going to cover the foreign policy stuff and, and stick to that and not engage in other commentary way back when this started. The, what she said really bothered me in the way she said it. Um, but regardless of your view, that period, that period in the 40s shaped a whole lot of stuff. Um, and and the, the brief summary from memory is not enough. Um, if you want to have a good base, you have to know that part. Um, even though I do not believe what, uh, what Clinton seemed to be indicating there. Okay, so please, yes, okay. <laughs> so the lighthearted question to end on, what do you think of RFK's brain worm? I don't know, I never met him. Um, the, uh, yeah, so if you missed this, some information came out about a health issue that RFK Jr. had. And it reportedly, he had a, a worm in his brain. That This isn't a joke. Um, and it, it, it died. Um, what do I think about it? I mean, I don't... Uh, I, I do not think that this is really a, I don't think this is a campaign issue. Um, you know, I, this is something, if I remember, this was like a decade ago. Um, it, it happened a while back. I would, I would think that if there were going to be major issues from it, they, they are apparent. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I get it. It's a very bizarre thing to come out about a presidential candidate. I, I don't think it's going to alter anybody's opinion, though. Um, it's going to just be... It, it's going to be joke material is what it's going to turn into. Um, so, yeah. I would definitely, going back to the the actual creation I would uh, I, I would go back one check my dates two I would uh, it, it's a period that you have to know about um, and it is not it, it's probably not material you can get from a meme you're going to have to do some reading on that one. Um, so, anyway. Okay, so there you go. A little more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day.